Hey everybody, welcome to Commercial Construction Elevate the Industry podcast series hosted by yours truly, Dave Presida. Thanks for joining us today. The purpose of the podcast is simple. It's to help everyone from owner to intern in commercial construction understand the industry better so you can pave your best way forward. We're fortunate to have with us today ISA Architectural. Uh, three gentlemen who I've known through the business and I admire. You have a great business going. We're going to learn a lot about you individually and about your business today. First, Patrick Ripple, of the founding member. We have Larry Windsor, who is also a partner, and Mike Morehouse. Gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Great Good to be, be here. Good. You said yeah. that the same. And by the way, yeah. you're going to see, you're gonna see uh, commercials, and we do have Mike Morehouse today. So <laughs> thank you for joining us. It wasn't in a commercial. Anyway, let's start with you, Patrick. You're the founding member. Tell us how you got started. Yeah, it's hard to believe now. It's uh, 21 years since uh, I became a, an architectural sales representative. Um, it started really in 1999 when I met Larry, uh, who hired me to sell metal conveyor belts, of all things, for the food and bottling industry. And I worked with Larry for a couple of years, selling the Keebler, Entenmann's, Nabisco, all these bakers, uh, uh, metal conveyor belts. Well, at the time, this particular manufacturer uh, was interested in developing an architectural division. They already sold one or two products uh, specific, specifically for the elevator cab industry and were interested in broadening their brand, widening their, 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 their offering. And uh, they had a, a position open for the national sales manager to just run around and figure out is there a market for metal mesh? And uh, I was sort of on the pioneering of, of metal mesh for this company here on Maryland's Eastern Shore and uh, fell in love with it right away. I mean, I was uh, I had no idea what specification selling was at the time. I didn't know that in order to get a product up on a building, it had to be spec by an architect. Um, was green as can be, uh, but spent a few years and really enjoyed uh, working with this company, um, specking metal mesh and selling it for, for commercial uh, construction. Uh, during that period, um, we had gone through a process of uh, interviewing, hiring, training, and, and developing a representative network in all the major cities across the country, Miami, Chicago, New York, LA. And so I was the guy, young as can be, green as can be, working with these manufacturer reps in these major markets. So I would uh, spend three or four days at a time uh, in these markets and, and do joint calls with the architects and the contractors. And, and loved it, absolutely fell in love with it. Just the, the, the thrill of getting it specced, tracking it through the whole process, finding out who the contractors are and then closing the business on the other end. And, and uh, uh, for a few years, uh, really enjoyed it and had a really good opportunity uh, in 2003 to go out on my own uh, and become my own independent rep company. And um, not married, no kids, was able to take a risk, jump out on my own and uh, it's been a it's been a whirlwind ever since, but it's been a it's been an incredible run um, here now. Uh, founding ISA Architectural in 2005 um, to to now with these two great partners of mine has been an incredible incredible journey. So I, I love how you describe it because you guys are the listening. You know, people that own businesses, it just doesn't start that. We don't start that way. You start by having a passion, which you described well, and you turned it into a business. So who came first? Mike did. Michael. Mike did in yeah. 2012. So Mike, how did you get involved with ISA? Well, ironically, uh, I also, you know, after he had left and become an independent rep, I was hired by Larry Windsor as well um, to kind of fill his shoes and take over his role at the manufacturer. Um, and again, was just like him, green as can be. I did come from, a, I had a sales background, um, which helped me. And, and then obviously under his tutelage, you know, Larry's tutelage, learned all about uh, the construction in industry, the architectural world. Um, I will say when I first, you know, and what you'll find out about Larry, he's very personal. He, he can connect with everybody he talks to. When I came in, I, I realized that I'm a very process oriented person. I, I grew up in athletics. My father was a, a basketball coach at our high school for, th for 32 years. So I recognize that I'm a type of person that has to have processes in place and, and that allows me to succeed. 
And so between Larry and, and myself, we developed, we, we took what Pat had left, which was great. I mean, people knew all about the, the company and, and the offering that they had, uh, but we really kind of created a nice process on the sales side because I needed that. Uh, and it was easier for me to help train people underneath me at that point. Um, what we called and we coined the roadmap to specification at the time because I was working on the front end for the most part trying because it was very spectrum and very an expensive product that you had to build a lot of value. Nothing off the shelf. Everything was custom preliminary engineering, every single job that you touch. So um, creating a step by step process uh, for myself and for the sales guys. Um, in order to ensure better success, uh, especially after it goes to bid. You're talking about, again, a, a very expensive product. So we were successful at that. And through that process, obviously, Patrick, when he jumped out, he retained that manufacturer as one of his uh, bread and butter lines, per se. And he, he already knew it. He knew the contacts in the Mid-Atlantic. Um, so we got to, to know each other and we hit it off right away. Very similar backgrounds. We're both from Baltimore. Both play golf. Both play golf, amongst other sports as well. We, we were multi-sport athletes in high school. Um, uh, both one of three brothers, or yeah, three total. Um, so we, we were very similar. We cut from the same rug, you would say, mm -hmm. or same cloth, right? So um, we just hit it off, and and eventually um, I kind of ran my course at the manufacturer level, and and I, I had to. I was living down here on the Eastern Shore. Wanted to move back to Baltimore with my wife and um, decided to take a risk. And we, we started to talk. He said, look, you know, he was very heavy into the interior world at the time with his mm -hmm. product uh, portfolio. He said, look, we could partner up and uh, and you could branch out into the exterior world. We could do this together. And, and that's kind of how I joined in, what was it, maybe eight, nine years ago? Yeah, 2012. Yeah. So so I got to ask, when did you get to that? <laughs> So he, so if I'm getting this right, you yeah. hired him. Yep. You hired Patrick. 1999. Patrick, Patrick left. 1999. Then you hired Mike. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're the yeah. common denominator in this whole thing. And oh, then, yeah. you say. And then yeah. it was them two. Mm -hmm. And then how did you get him involved? So. Well, we had worked and I had continued to work with Larry for years um, as the representative for that manufacturer and obviously Mike. And Mike and I still had that product together when he came on uh, to uh, partner with me. So we were still working with Larry all this time. And then uh, yeah, and I was with that away. manufacturer for 20 years. Uh, so I spent the corporate world for 20 years. Um, actually was in the architectural business for a while and got moved back into the industrial business because I needed some help there. Uh, but I really missed the architectural business. And my career kind of went its way at this manufacturer. Um, didn't necessarily think that I had a future um, at that point in time. And we had always been talking, kind of like brothers and this, that, and the other. And so 2016 rolled around, and I'm like, hey, I think I'm ready for a change. So we got talking, saw it as an opportunity to get back into what my passion was. And um, here we are, five years later. Awesome. Yeah. Now, I don't care who takes this, but I'm going to ask you, somebody's going to answer this question. Elevator pitch. You got 10 floors, right? That's about... 20 seconds. What is ISA? What does ISA do? Um, well, obviously, I, you know, we, we, we're an independent manufacturers agency, uh, even though I like to- By industry definition. By industry definition. Yeah. But we, we tend to, we feel as though we're more like a sales force. Um, certainly we have, uh, you know, we're contracted with manufacturers to represent their products uh, and, and engineered systems here within the territory that we, we contract with them. Um, but we are a full service uh, agency. And what I mean by that is uh, a lot of people, when you hear independent rep, um, we come from the manufacturing world and we have a lot of experience, you know, handling a rep network. Most of the time it might be husband and wife, one or two people, father, son, father, daughter. Um, a lot of times they will also tend to prefer one side of the on the ninth floor so yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> uh, well so, well they, they prefer to either uh, do spec drive or sell through contractors and we recognize that um, you needed to do it from both sides and so uh, we, we, we both 
drive it from a you know business development, marketing, drive specifications with the architects, obviously provide them complete design assistance for whatever they need, but also have that relationship with the general contractors all the way down through the installers who are ultimately our customer. So the installer is your customer. You handle the installers? We, I handle the installers, yes. Good luck with that, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, that's thick skin. I, mean, I, I said <laughs> it earlier, you gotta have thick skin. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, you know, I do business in all transparency with ISA, we're good. Everybody says they're design assist, they're gonna help you do this and that, but not everybody's not everybody's built for that. I think that's what you were alluding to. Yeah. And then right. there's a place for everybody. But, but what I see from a contractor's perspective is help. Yeah. I see real help, valuable help, tangible help. We had an issue on a job with air barrier and yeah. Dorkin is the guy. Yeah. And we were unsuccessful getting on that job, but I saw the value of what you guys do, yeah. right? So you built, you, you have to spec it on the front end or it doesn't matter. And then you've got to help sell it, right? So if it's in the right. spec, you're going to sell it. There's so many things that happen. What makes, I'm going to give this to you, Patrick, what makes your company Different. What differenti differentiates you sure. from others? What you'll notice if you if you view our portfolio of products, it, it's it it's a very strategic portfolio. It didn't just fall into place. It was very strategic, very thought out, very pragmatic approach to retaining these products in our in our in our portfolio. Uh, all complementary lines. If you look at the interiors, it's uh, it's wood, metal, and glass. Um, and 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 decorative systems engineered systems and they they all uh, uh work cohesively in, in most of the projects that, that we work on um and, and same same goes for the exterior if you look at the exterior package it's it's all a big complementary mix of uh high-end products um and and, and that really uh, provide the solution that architects and contractors need. We're not just trying to sell product, really. I mean, we are offering solutions. But the product so, happens. We connect yeah. people and products. Um, Got that from your commercial. I yeah, like that. that's right. You I like how like I was tying part. all that yeah. together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so does, can you let, because you're doing so many things that are related, is there any leverage there? Like, oh, yeah, sure. certainly. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly, and we want to be seen as the resource for the industry, the construction market in this area. Unlike, like Mike said, we've dealt with manufacturers reps for a long time. And unlike 90, 95% of what's out there, um, we're not selling products. We're selling our services from a consultative standpoint. And we do our job and we add value to the architects and the contractors. Business will come. So we're going to take a short break. And when we get back, we're going to talk to uh, ISA about how about their the products that they do uh, rep, and we're gonna we're gonna ask you to describe your 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 best type of job and your best client. <laughs> <laughs> nice. See you in a minute. <laughs> Hi, I'm Patrick Ripple, founding partner of ISA Architectural. I've known that chap right there for well over twenty years. And what a twenty years it's been. I'm Larry Windsor, yeah. partner, vice president of construction services. Our third partner, Mike Morehouse, can't be with us today. We are the Mid-Atlantic's premier sales force for architectural building products and engineered architectural solutions. For over 15 years, we have been providing comprehensive design solutions to architects and designers all across this region and high quality economic product solutions to contractors and subcontractors too. We bring products and people together. We specialize in the building envelope, everything from the weather barrier all the way out to different types of cladding. We fully understand the rain screen principle, and we have an interior portfolio specializing in wood and metal walls and ceilings. If you're a developer, part of a design team, architect, or interiors, or if you're a contractor, let us help you. Visit www.isaarchitectural.com and see how we can bring value to your project. And welcome back to Commercial Construction Elevate the Industry. We're here with ISA Architectural. Gentlemen, again, thank you for joining us. Um, it, you know, to better understand your business model, why don't you describe what a really good job looks like, A, and B, how you, how you navigate? What's the process once you get that opportunity? Well, I'll start. I mean, we we uh, we love to receive ITVs, invitation to bids. 
Um, first off, Mike and I are doing business development with the architects all the time. We love those projects too, where we start and finish uh, with the architect, finish with the contractor. Um, but these, the ITBs are great because these are projects that we may not know about. And they, um, they come to us by way of the GC or subcontractor. We have uh, other associates that work with us um, who are, are, are work with us to flush out these ITBs, meaning that they'll download all the drawings, they'll look at everything that's in there spec-wise, they'll look at the drawings and identify back to us um, opportunities for us to sell or add value to the project. Um, we get a nice detailed report of what's, on these pro what's in these projects with square footages or linear footages, the specs. So we understand right off the bat whether or not this is a project making, that we want to chase. They're making it too easy for you. Right? <laughs> so once we decide we want to chase it from, from the contractor standpoint, it falls into his lap. I'll let him take it. Yeah. But the best jobs that we find are ones that start out, if it's an architect who's engaged with an owner or a contractor who's engaged with an owner, and they've got a concept of something that they want to do. Uh, we want to be involved early on because we want to show that we can add value on that job. And at the end of the day, what we want to do is make life easy for the architects and the contractors in this market. Interesting. So you'll get a job and it'll have terracotta on it, on the outside. You have that, what's that wall you that you just showed me? The um, composite stone yeah. product? No, the, 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 wall, armor, the wall, armor, armor wall, the structurally armor. insulated sheathing product. Right. I got these guys got a, a really lot of good stuff. It's things that I just I didn't even realize until I walked in here today. But you get in early so you can help design it. But you're telling me that all of your manufacturers will do their own takeoffs and give you a report and no, you can sell no, it. No, 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 that's we, not true. We have people that work that for ISA. For Thank you. Okay. Yes. That will do those yes. tasks yeah. for us. That's that's right. yep. that's, right. that's why I said they make it too easy for you. No. So yeah. but the manufacturers will support you technically. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that's correct. What will happen is once we get those ITBs flushed out, um, we'll go out and we'll look for the contractors that are working on the job. Um, we'll reach out to those guys, figure out how we can add value in that particular job for that particular contractor, uh, engage with the subcontractors that are working on, on the jobs for them, and seeing if we can add some value there. So you said something that really rings home, and maybe, we, Mike, you can take this, but getting in early. Well, huge. You hear him continue to say add value. I know that's very cliche. Um, I get it. But the reality is we actually like to, what we do. Uh, we have passion in it. And it's not about just selling. It really is about helping. And so um, I'll tell you a quick story. When before, when it was just me and him and, and me and Patrick, and we were uh, building out the exterior portfolio, we really didn't have a lot of experience. We picked up a couple lines. And I remember when we when we only when we didn't have a complete exterior offering and I didn't really have a complete understanding either. Right. I was still kind of green to every all the exterior products. I would get questions from whether it be architects. And at the time we didn't have uh, delineated roles like we do now with him handling the contractor. So we were kind of wearing uh, all the hats at the time and especially me handling exterior. So. Contractors would have questions and I, I would, th some that were, I would say, beyond my expertise at the time. And and, and so I, I said to myself, well, what do I need to, what do I need to pick up? Especially when it came to not just products. Products are easy. You can, you can pick up a product. You can look at their technical details and you can understand, okay, this is how it goes up. That That's, that's not what I mean. I, I didn't know why architects at the time made the decisions that they made, not only with the cladding, why'd you make a decision for that cladding, but behind it. Okay. So I see insulation back there. Why do you need insulation there? Um, air barriers. What the heck is an air barrier at the, at the time? And so I committed myself. I said, I, I can't, I can't sell like this. I have to understand the whole envelope. So talked to Pat said, look, we need to go out. He said, well, what's, what's the, what's the, What's the linchpin there? I said, well, it's going to be probably either continuous insulation or air barrier because first off, that's on every job. It's like structure. You need it now. Code's driving it. We need to get in front of it. What I didn't realize is that when we picked up Dorkin as our air barrier, 
I, I recognized it early on, but I, I did not foresee it, is that that was the education I was missing. I mean, these guys are partnering with the latest and greatest building science experts. Um, they, 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 they understand, they taught me the rain screen principle. And I, I started to engulf myself into this information. Why, you know, it was so intriguing to me. I would go to seminars by Dr. John Straub or Strebrook and I'm taking notes and I'm going on YouTube, figuring out why decisions are made. So fast forward to, like you said, getting early, getting in early. Now I'm, ex you know, in, in my world doing complete design assistance for the exterior portfolios for ISA. My ideal project is I get, I get architects that are, are, that know me and they'll call me say, Hey Mike, I need your help with this. Let's sit down with the design team. Now it's virtual, right? In 2021, we're doing everything virtual, which makes it a little easier. I mean, we can be yeah. a little bit more nimble, um, quite frankly. Um, so we get on a virtual meeting and we, you know, architects, it's tough for them. First off, they've got a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of manufacturers out there telling them a whole lot of things. What's reality? What is the best for their prop? And, and I honestly tell them, I'm not here. Look, I'll give you my advice. I have a certain portfolio, but oftentimes you guys are going to lead me in a direction. I might point you in, in, into a to another manufacturer that we don't sure. represent. And that's fine because not my products don't fit every job. Absolutely. But we can look at, you know, they, they have a hard, it's hard for them. They're, they're detailing. They spring a lot of billable hours doing, you know, actual detail, uh, you know, design work. Um, it's very difficult for them to understand the complete envelope, why you should do certain things, how dew point, uh, where dew point's gonna gonna fall, vapor drive inward, outward. You know, it's very difficult for them to to, to wrap their heads around that. So we have these fun discussions. I, I like it. And well, you know, we had a discussion this morning. This yeah. morning that I gotta get you guys involved with. It's about a job we have at Towson University. And Perkins and Will is the architect. And they did a 30 page thermal analysis wow. and they have, they have Z girts and how they want it thermally broken. It's amazing what they did. Now we're going to, we're going to try and steer them away from that, but I probably, well, I'm going to need your help. We're a design assist partner. So we're taking on that role question, right? You got to get in early. Now you said it, I find out the subcontractors who are working on the job. If you're getting in early, a lot of times they're not there. There, yeah. there aren't subs yet. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. Exactly. So that's when you got to bring somebody in, right? Yes. Well, <laughs> you know, that's we, exactly right. We track it stringently. I mean, we have a we have a a, a process and CRM system that allows us to track. What CRM everything. do you use? Salesforce. Say, say, yeah. There you go. Yeah. And, and and we're very stringent. We're very tactful with with using it, which is um, surprising for salespeople. But yeah, <laughs> you that. we just, learned. We learned well, from yeah. our days in the manufacturer. I have a meeting tomorrow as a consultant with a big company that's that's changing the way they do business development. Yeah, and I they, they don't know what CR means. Yeah, yeah. Well, I they're going to. Well, you know, it's funny. We have a unique perspective because we have we deal with so many manufacturers that um, it's amazing to me how some have not yet fully embraced CRM CR. systems because. I mean, even independent agencies, right? I don't know how you're tracking jobs if you don't have a yeah. kind of a set it and for data software. I'm the worst at it, but yeah. I, I, got to, I got to use CRMs a few years ago when I had a big sales team and you can't, you can't live without it. No, yeah. you can't, absolutely can't. You know, so, so you, you want to get in early and you want to provide it, but at the same time, you build a relationship with the design team. Yeah. Now, absolutely. what about when you were looking at the glass partitions on the interior that you sell? Well, it's the same process Mike, what Mike was talking about um, is I get, because I handle the interior design assist, I get opportunities to look at the metal ceiling and wall package, the wood ceiling and wall package, glass partitions, decorative laminates, um, and specialty glass. And, and so each of those are being used in many of these projects that, that you know, we're, we're brought in on. So, you know, we get an opportunity to to offer up solutions if it's the right choice for the design, you know, meeting the design intent that they have. Point I was trying to make earlier about the Salesforce and, 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 and relationship building is, yeah, the fact that we do have relationships with these architects drives us toward who are going to be the awarded or bidding GCs. Uh, once we know that, then we start shotgunning out who the subs are going to be who are the bidding subs at each of these for each of these projects and then 
and you do the track it all through sales. Yep, track it all through Salesforce, and uh, recall that information at a, at a keystroke. Well, it's great because you can then you can sort any way you want. Oh you yeah, know, jobs that are pending, jobs you lost, why, all that good stuff. Anyway, we're going to take a short break. Uh, when we come back with ISA, we're going to find out exactly who they rep and why they're so good. So we'll see you in a minute. Hey, everybody, if you're looking for a strategic business partner who does subcontracting work on the interiors, let me tell you about the CFP group. They are a minority business enterprise and have been in business for over 20 years. If you're interested, you can contact them by email at cfpgroup1 at gmail.com or call them directly at 410-977-8568. That's 410-977-8568. Take it from me. I've done business with them, and I know they can get the job done. Welcome back to Commercial Construction Elevate the Industry. We're here with ISA. Gentlemen, let's continue the discussion. Um, you know, as your business is measurable, right? And, and you know, you're in it for passionate reasons, and, and the money will follow if you do a good job. And you, you found your niche, which is great. But if we had to go back in time, ISA, what would your biggest single dollar value project be? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, we've had projects as little as a hundred dollars to two million dollars. I mean, I would say our largest project was over two million, slightly over two million. Right. Well, one thing I want to add to that is is that um, you you mentioned that that yeah we're in it for sales and, and we're in it for for for, for all of those accoutrements. Um, which we absolutely love. Mike alluded to the fact that we just love what we do. We're coming up on a milestone this year. We're gonna hit probably in the next couple of months, $100 million in sales since 2005. So that is a milestone, you know, that's what kind of keeps the juices flowing. We like to record those, every every order we get, we like to celebrate. And so we're coming up on that big That's six plus year. million a year, right? Average, yeah. and you're doing well. That's awesome. Yeah. That That is a yeah. good milestone. Congratulations. And the, you're gonna get there. 50% of that probably came in the, I don't know, even the last. 56% of that is from 2016 You know why he knows that? Because he has a CRM. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> 2016 to today, it's 56% of that. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, well, and that, and, yeah, that's, right that's good. And, and even during COVID, right? Because yeah. Yeah. Well, cool, that also COVID, coincides but... with the three of us getting together. Yeah. Stars wow. align. Stars align. See that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you've done lots of business, and that's good. You know, again, you, you, it, and it's a reward for hard work and valuable work. Uh, yeah. Mike, let's biggest job, or let's say a job with the most uh, products. Well, that is uh, that's a hard one. I mean, we've a lot of our jobs will have multiple products on, especially when the exterior. Again, very complementary portfolio. Um, the linchpin for me a lot of times when the communication starts with architects early on in jobs is, okay, what type of air barrier are you using? Do I add value with my particular um, br brand of air barrier? Typically, yes. Uh, what type of continue insula continuous insulation system are you using? Will, you know, Smart CI or Green Gert, and I'm sure we'll get into the portfolio, but does that play? What's the strategy there? So a lot of times it'll start there and then kind of okay, now what kind of claddings do you have? So, you know, AARP, uh, I think it was o OPX was the architect. We had a great relationship. We started from that same strategy, functional air barrier, continuous insulation on out. And I think at the, I mean, we've got some, you know, really beautiful photos of that job where it was um, some, some faux wood panels that we did with stone wood and we had some corrugated or, or profiled metal panels with Morin. Uh, and, and and some others on there. So you guys so, have some bandwidth. I love it. Yeah, yeah. And we've got a lot of projects like that. That one was one of the more recent ones, and, and we just got really nice photography, so it stuck out to me. But there's a lot of those examples out there. So from your perspective, and I'm not going to ask you names, but in the industry, what sectors do you hit? Drywall. What yeah, else, who do you hit? It's, it's funny because listening to Mike talk about the products or the projects that we have multiple products, um, we tend to, we've probably got a very strong amount of projects that we've actually produced for multiple subcontractors because yes, some of the rain screen installers will pick up something like Green Gert or Armor Wall or so on and so forth. But 
nine times out of ten, well, eight times out of ten on those jobs, the drywall guy's picking up the green girt, the armor wall, the nine wood ceilings, um, right. perhaps mm -hmm. the Gordon metal panels, right. so on and so forth. And the rain screen guys are just are doing the cladding. Right. So, but yeah, we have quite a bit of that. So it's a fragmented that. business. Right? Oh, yes. I mean, you guys got to navigate masons. Right, drive Miller, Miller waterproofing yeah. companies. That's yeah. where I'm yeah. going with this. So you you get you got to get around, right? You're not just focused Man, we on do. one sector. <laughs> yeah, which we is get kinda, around. Which yeah. is kind of cool. So that leads me to the next question, which is, you know, let's let's talk about the manufacturers, the people that make the stuff. Right. You're the interior guy. Tell me your your biggest lines. Yeah, nine wood. Uh, right off the bat, I mean, it's a huge product for us. Uh, very high quality wood ceiling manufacturer. It's the only manufacturer in the United States that only does wood ceilings. Um, we do large projects. I mean, we do twenty thousand square feet of colleges. You mentioned Towson University. We're on spec on Towson University for a large scope of wood ceilings there. Um, so, so nine wood is the number one line by far. Uh, we do. We also represent Gordon Architectural. Gordon specializes in architectural metal fabrications, yes. ceilings and walls, um, and and various uh, metal accessories for interiors. Um, we have uh, Chem Metal Tree Frog and Interior Arts. It's an accessory laminate product line for us. Our newest manufacturer is Metro Wall. We're very excited about this. We just signed them the other day. Metro Wall is uh, one of the largest demountable wall manufacturers in, in on the East Coast, based big, in New York. Big for during COVID. Now. Big, yep. There, you, you're going to see push. you're going to see demountable glass partitions go up everywhere, and right. we're hoping to ride that um, and provide solutions, of course, for that with that product. And we have Unicell Architectural. Unicell produces um, insulated glass with integral blinds inside the IG unit. Typically, you see those in healthcare applications for privacy, um, interior privacy windows, patient care windows, nurses stations, um, OR rooms, and that type of thing. Um, let's see, what else am I missing? I think I got them all. The uh, interiors. G there's some GKD. There's a lot, there's some yeah. crossover, for example. Yeah. We have Stonewood Phenolic that crosses over to the interior. Outside. Yeah, GKD metal fabric, same thing. Ex big exterior job, Mark talked about those. And then some interior accent products. So how about the exterior, Mike? Uh, well, probably, um, you know, I, I'll start with uh, the air bearer because we'll start from functional. We'll get out to cladding. We, we represent Dorkin. We're happy to have them here in the Mid-Atlantic picking up steam. Um, historically, the Mid-Atlantic's been kind of dominated by one manufacturer. Uh, you're probably aware Uncle of Uncle Henry. Them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uncle Henry. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Dorkin... Um, High performance, vapor permeability is there is is critical for them. All self-adhered membrane, um, and then we have Green Gert uh, or Smart CI, um, commonly known both ways. Uh, that is a traditional CI system that will attach over the air barrier and, and sheathing or block, uh, and and basically ASHRAE 90.1 compliant. NFPA 285 compliant. It, you can use it with any type of insulation, whether it be polyiso, spray foam. Uh, mineral wool, obviously, is, is, is very popular Huge. right now. It's extremely popular. Uh, one, because of the, the non-combustibility and then vapor permeability as well. Uh, and then on the cladding, uh, the other thing I, want, I don't want to forget is a, a hot new product is a structural insulated sheathing called Armor Wall. Uh, it's a hybrid approach to not only uh, air and water tightness, but it, it includes structural sheathing, thermal layer, air and water um, uh, control layer in it all in one product. So reduces schedules um, big time, but offers a lot of um, ad, you know, advantages, not only from a scheduling standpoint, but it's much easier for the rain screen to attach to than a traditional uh, any CI system that you use. It's eliminating revolutions around the building. Um, and then what we attach to those, uh, we, we, we like to think that we've got the best brands out there. Um, Dry Design's a very reputable, pressure equalized, single skin metal rain screen um, that I would say leads the, that segment of the industry in, in terms of performance, uh, certainly aesthetics uh, and, just, and just options. Um, their cousin, Morin, <laughs> they're all, they're under the Kingspan umbrella. 
uh, but Morin, um, out of you know, they've got plants all over the country, but they're headquartered in Connecticut. They make a, a, another lighter gauge, single skin profiled. They do some corrugated, uh, both uh, above grade wall profiles, and they've got some standing seam roof options. Uh, we have an ACM fabricator that we work with out of New Jersey that's very reputable in the Mid Atlantic as well. Who's that? That's Architectural Metal Design. Yes, AMD. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have Stonewood mm -hmm. Phenolic. Love that company. Um, we, 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 we tried other phenolic companies. Stonewood's the only one that made in the United States. It's made right here in Wisconsin. Talking deliveries of three to four weeks. And not months. And not months. It's, it's important. They're as competitive. They're as, uh, you know, the products as quality as, as any of the ones coming out of Europe. So Stonewood's been a great addition to our portfolio. We have a lightweight terracotta. And believe me, we started with the most traditional terracotta <laughs> brand and most reputable at the time, but they they more, you know, they, they had an archaic way of, of manufacturing. Uh, we have Tonality. Tonality is a state-of-the-art German lightweight terracotta. You're talking six and a half pounds per square foot versus 13, 14. Easier to get up onto the wall. Um, we, another um, really popular exterior um, cladding option that we, sell a lot of is, is um, fiber cement, high density fiber cement. Now that is a catch all term. We get branded with Hardy and Nietzsche and some of the medium and low density, but uh, Sembrit is different. It's it's a stronger, more durable Sembrit. panel. Yep, uh, it's it's brought into the country by American Fiber Cement. So kind of the same, same uh, you know, people call it American Fiber Cement. It's the same thing, but very popular. Brought it in big slabs, so it's here and they cut it. Exactly, to, stored to right in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. they got it half million square feet of material down there, right? Eastern yeah. architectural right. products. So EAP. EAP, yep. Um, we, we brought one in, in the last year or two, uh, uh, another European manufacturer, um, Petrarch and Steny, which are new. People probably aren't very familiar, uh, but it's exciting. I, I, you know, me being in the exterior world, seeing a lot of products, it's a composite stone. Uh, so basically they're taking recycled like crushed marble for instance adding in uh resin heat pressing it so it's a mixture of like natural terracottas and fiber cements with what you might see with with the phenolics and that resin makes it very very durable um, they can do a lot of different things they can press irish slate finishes to it um, they can do big large sheets it takes water on like porcelain very very nimble very durable um uv resistant so you'll see and very and, and price very price competitive so you'll start seeing that they also have a 60-year warranty there's no oh, other product God. that has 60-year warranties you also have a porcelain line now right that yes so uh just now getting that off the ground porcelain tile been around for a while obviously porcelain tile is is, is durable just like all the terracottas and ceramics um that you can, you know, out of all the exterior lines, that stuff will last forever. And you're seeing a lot of these natural products starting to add in, um, like coatings like titanium dioxide, which cleans the air. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, it really is what they're doing these days. So, you can feel yeah. the passion from the sky. I love yeah. it. I love it. Um, but let me ask you another question. Because I'm in the exterior business. I've always been. I do so many interiors too, sort of like what you guys do. Yeah. If you had to say, percentage of business exterior versus interior. What do you think of the day? Well, it's it's grown uh, threefold in four years. It. The exterior, exterior business, business has grown. Point. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and much of that is attributed to Mike, um, if not all of it, because, it, and of course, Larry with the contractors, but Mike really dug in early on uh, when he decided, listen, we need to branch out and, and broaden our, get an exterior it, it portfolio product. super fast growing. Yeah. Segment. Yeah. And I just did a, a, a session on rain screen and it's here to stay. Yeah. Right. And I think if you're riding that wave, you know, and you guys are in, you know, on the front of that wave, I think that's a really good thing. Um, you know, so you, you've got, you've got the whole interior, exterior covered. You're on the front end. Uh, you know, how do you find new opportunities? Do they find you? Do you find them? We we do it both. We, we go both ways. We we um, one of our other associates, uh, Lee Newcomb. He uh, one of his tasks and roles every day is to um, basically troll Insight Connect. See, it's the old it's the old CMD uh, to wow. 
to do searches to find new bid, new project opportunities from schematics to design development to uh, CD development all the way up until bid process. So what about, I'm more thinking about manufacturers and products to, mm -hmm. to rep. Okay. Because that's a very, well, you know, you said it, it's strategic. Well, yeah. oh, what I was going to say is um, ISA Architectural as a brand name is like a snowball and the longer we're in it and the more products that we have, obviously the bigger it becomes, the more the architects are aware, the more the contractors are aware. We've done a great job, I think, over the last five years of, of spreading uh, our brand out there. On the flip side of that, also strategically planning your portfolio with the brand names and the, the high quality products okay. that people already know it's a it's a you know it's a match made in heaven because we're getting but you know so it's trolling cmd it's the fact that we've got a good brand name out there in the mid-atlantic mm -hmm. uh, as a as a rep agency and people just knowing us individually and, and having those relationships over time prosper but then the the manufacturers i mean we've got you know there's a, oftentimes we're getting leads from manufacturers or people just calling hey i i didn't realize that you know it, it's less and less now but there it's times that i didn't realize you guys read hey, this or I what, didn't. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. and we know each other it's it's yeah. a lot out there too right so um i think it's 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 all of that and so uh, your brand if i'm getting this right is rep you know strategic partners are high-end manufacturers and you add, you combine manufacturers with people, right? You yep. combine products with people. So you've done your job. You've done your job. You got, you got your specs written. You're, you're right there. Here you go, Larry. Halfway yeah. there, Larry. <laughs> yeah. Now it comes down to you. So, uh, so uh, they did their job. What are your challenges getting the job? You know, getting people to buy through you. Well, I think at, at this point in time, I think that there's a good subset of subcontractors in the marketplace right now that do, hopefully, do feel like ISA brings value to their equation. By the way, what does ISA stand for? Innovative Sales Associates. There you go. Okay, just <laughs> that, uh, throw that out there. Yep, yeah, yeah, appreciate that. Um, so when something comes out after they've done their job, um, it's my job to make sure that I have encompassed the opportunity. So I should know every general contractor that's been in the job. I should be talking to every general contractor. I should be figuring out the subcontractors that they have. By the way, and, I never hear from this guy. And, and, <laughs> I doubt that. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and at the end of the day, based on the relationships that I've built in the marketplace, there are certain subcontractors that I feel really strong about as far as knowing what their abilities are and being able to tie general contractors with subcontractors with products and putting that all together. And that's so that, important because yeah. not everybody, like because I'm in the prefab end of things, yeah. we're in early, which is yeah. phenomenal. And we yeah. can leverage that. To, but but that not every job is prefabricated. That's true. So you're going to get people that are bidding. We like to negotiate work, right? Yeah. And that's kind of our brand, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But to bid work, it's important. And it's going to happen. It's never going to, you know, it's always going to be there. Yeah. So now you gotta you gotta find the right players and put them together. Put them together and, and, be, and be walk that tightrope. Re, and be relentless. <laughs> well, that's so, true. Well, and, yeah. You know this uh, the the Mid Atlantic in general because of Washington D.C. It's very it's very competitive. It's it's saturated with whether it be subcontractors, whether it be um, fabricators, with different product manufacturers attacking this market. So you have to be nimble. You have to know people. You have to have the relationships. It's it's funny. I mean, if you look down our portfolio, because we through Salesforce, another plug for them, but it's it's true. Like we can track hit ratios. We can track, um, you know, obviously how much business we're doing per product, but even the ones we're not we're not getting, and we can see okay, what products are the stickiest, or what products. Sure. Uh, might not have as much competition as let's say, you know, metal panel, for instance, everybody, everybody seems to want to fabricate metal panel. So uh, it might not have the same closing ratio as a, a vision control. And there's more people doing it. There's just more yeah. people doing it. Um, but understanding that, knowing that, kind of working that dynamic, he's become masterful at that, obviously. 
something we have to look at all the time when we review our portfolio, like what makes the most, what's adding value, right? What's, what do people need? Which so, we do, we, we look at our portfolio at least once a year, sometimes twice, and decide, hey, what fits? Does this still have that same strategic feel to it? And, right. and I'm so. going to come back with a question for you. So tell me, not names, but describe what a good client looks like for you. You deal with the contractors every day. It, it's somebody that we've built a relationship over the years. Um, it's somebody that I know they see value in what ISA brings to the table. Um, even if we don't end up selling them a product on that particular job. Um, there's somebody that you can get together with, um, strategize on a particular job, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, how can we add value here, can we not add value here? Um, and it's somebody who's willing to listen. And I'd say that in this marketplace, um, we do have a good, we probably have a know, dozen, 20 of those. Um, not everybody likes that approach, quite frankly. I mean, we can deal with that as well. We get business from that type of contractor as well. But so that a couple would be of things you didn't mention that I think are important, you probably do too, would be uh, a company that has some bandwidth. Yes. You want, you know, you, you can pay reputable, bills, reputable get work, right? Yeah. Progressive. Is yes. That, is that important? Progressive is important. Because you guys certainly are. And you want to be dealing with people who are too, because you're going to be able to leverage that relationship better, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yep. that is a, that's a pretty good one. So, you know, we said it before, getting the job. You just said it. We don't always sell. You don't always have the right products. You don't always point people in the right direction. But one thing remains constant with whatever you do is you're continuing to build relationships. That's business. That's exactly yeah, right. That's right? exactly right. Now, we're going to end it with this. How do you, how do you, you're going to manage expectations of the manufacturers, right? You do. Sure. Or, yeah, now, sure. do you sit down with them every year and say, okay, here's our, our goal, our sales goal? Because if you're dropping the ball, if not you, because you wouldn't do that. If if a rep was dropping a ball and not doing any sales, they're going to move on. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. what what other value besides it's just raw numbers, but you sit down and plan this out every year with all your manufacturers? We, we actually do. encourage that. We want to be engaged with our manufacturers and talk about what we're seeing in the marketplace, uh, what we think needs to be improved upon, what we can improve upon. We want feedback. Um, so that's important for us, and we feel like that creates the best strategic alliance between us and our manufacturers. Now, you call the manufacturer and you say, "Look, we got an opportunity for this job. We need some. We need some help. You got to yeah. do that, right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. they know it's coming. Yep. Yeah. So that's normal. That, they yeah. expect it. They expect. But you don't want to be crying wolf every all the week. time. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> exactly. then you don't get anywhere, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. So let's close by this. Uh, I want you guys each to think about one or two people who really influenced you uh, to become the person you are. Yeah, the business person and the person. And we're going to start with the start with you who came on board third. This is going to sound cliche. I think one of the things that's allowed me to be the person that I am. Um, to be able to have the work ethic that I have and the enjoyment in life um, actually comes from my father. And my father's a waterman. He's worked on the water on Chesapeake Bay his entire life. Wow. So from the time I was nine years old, my summers consisted of getting up at two o'clock in the morning and working all day. And if I was lucky, well, more times than not, being able to make my baseball game or yeah. my basketball game. And that was my summers. <clears throat> That's what I knew. But it instilled in me a work ethic that has and responsibility that has served me well through my career. Awesome. So, Dad, love yeah, it. Dad, yeah. How about you, Mike? I've got a few. My father being one of them, being uh, he was a basketball coach for a long time, and and love that. that seemed to be through athletics how I was never the smartest, um, but you know he always told me that um, talent sets your floor, not your ceiling. And so work ethic is, is like Larry said, the most important. Um, but my older brother, Colin, I think from a business standpoint um, and who has shaped me really, I mean, he looked after me as a kid, I was younger. Uh, he was the oldest of three. I was the youngest of three. 
Uh, he was uh, always, he was the guy that was this, a very smart, naturally smart. Uh, he didn't have to work hard, but he did work hard. Mm -hmm. You know, valedictorian at high school, valedictorian at college, top, you know, 5% in his law school. Uh, played a lot of sports and just looking up to him and him, him, yeah. And he, he, uh, I always aspired to be like him. Uh, and he was very gracious enough, you know, even though as annoying as I was probably as a kid, he, he <laughs> never complained. He always let me come with him. What's the age out. difference? Four years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, he, you know, we've become, you know, obviously we were good friends there, you know, when we were younger, but we're, we're very close now. And, um. I just, you know, I appreciate him and, and same with my father as well. I'm my middle brother, but, awesome. uh, but I always looked up to him for sure. And, and I think he's kind of shaped me into who I am. And now the founding member. Yeah, well, um, I have a few as well. Uh, I started my mom. I had my, my first job, I was 14 years old. I mean, I was always, um, my parents had instilled the work ethic in me very early on. So. Uh, I got to give it up to my mom. She she really made it. Um, she wanted us to feel like it was important to earn and save, and we did. And um, so so early on, definitely definitely my mom. Um, as I got older, uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Tom Resch. And uh, before I met Larry, I worked for a retail company in the malls, sell, selling sunglasses. And I started with that company when I was 17 years old. When I was 18, I was a store manager of two locations at 18, mm -hmm. um, store manager. So for me, that was huge. And I wouldn't have had that opportunity had not been for that gentleman who, who really said to me, listen, you know, you can do this. And, and he, he brought me outside of my comfort zone to be able to think of myself as an individual who can lead and, and train and, and sell. And, and I did. I did it well. I worked for that company for eight years. Uh, this gentleman right here um, is another one who gave me a huge opportunity to uh, switch gears from retail position into well, metal conveyor belting, um, and so uh, was uh, was a big uh, a big influencer for me uh, at that point in time in my life. But right now, what inspires me every day, these two guys, plus Lee Newcomb and Anne Marie Brannigan, there are two other associates who aren't here today. They, they challenge me, um, we challenge each other, um, and they make it exciting to come in here every day and, and uh, collaborate, work together, and, um, and just uh, sell products. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and for those watching and listening, you heard one thing that was consistent with all three of these guys, and it is work ethic. And I don't, we say owner to intern, and I mean that. I don't care what you do, do it well, right? I love sports. I love the sports analogy. I'm, a, I'm an athlete my whole life, and I think you learn so much through the game, whatever the game that is. You learn how to win, to lose, to be a partner. You know, and, and in closing, I will say this. I want to congratulate you, first of all, for the milestone you just reached. Um, I want to thank you in particular for, for helping me. You do it every day. Uh, you know, what I feel... And I sensed it, but I, you know, in your commercial, even without Mike, <laughs> is that you're tight. And what I'm, what I'm seeing as your brand, okay, is is passion, and and the love to work together. Not every company can say that, okay. And I mean it. I've seen a lot of. I've worked with a lot of them. They they don't. It's not. It's just a natural thing. It's part of who you are, and, and you should be proud of that. So again, I want to thank you guys for joining us and sharing your stories. Uh, and uh, I certainly got to know you a lot better than, than I did, and I appreciate that. Well, thanks, thanks for having me. Appreciate, appreciate, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. It. Okay, yeah. Yeah. we move on. Thanks. All right. So, thanks for joining us today, and until next week, stay safe and stay tuned. So, if you have questions about starting, building or selling your business or anything in between, contact me two ways. Go to my website, adacorp.com. That's A-D-I-C-O-R-P.com. It's my last name spelled backwards. Or visit me on LinkedIn. Go to David Proceda and leave your messages there. Visit us on our YouTube channel at Elevate the Industry. Check us out on Instagram at Elevate Industry. Subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. Either way, We'll talk next week, and between now and then, stay safe and stay tuned. 
All the music for the episodes, including our theme song, Elevate, was provided by DMV producer Trey Skills. If you like what you heard, follow Trey Skills on Instagram at Trey Skills, T-R-E-Y-S-K-I-L-L-Z. That's T-R-E-Y-S-K-I-L-L-Z. Elevate, 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 elevate.